Hey, now we're live. Sweet. All right. So again, we got <laughs> the colors we're using. We have uh, black and white, as always. Then we have primary blue, and we have primary yellow, and a bright red tonight. Ooh. All right. <laughs> so the painting we're going to be doing something like is this sweet desert scene with a little cacti. All right, so we're gonna start, as always, when we do acrylic painting, we're gonna start with the background and work our way forward. So we're gonna start with this top uh, part, which is kind of purplish. Um, and when I did this, I, I, it came out a little darker than I wanted, so I think the one tonight, we'll just tr try and make a little bit lighter than this one. Um, but we have dark purple, and then we're gonna kind of work our way down with those colors. So, let us begin um, by just going through some of the other supplies that you have. All right, so if this is your first night with us, we got Bob. All right, Bob is your big old brush. If you don't have the identical brush, that's okay. Find something like it, there's Bob. And we're just gonna put all of our brushes and we're gonna keep them in the water, all right? So just go ahead and put Bob in the, uh, the pool. All right, then we got Rhonda. Rhonda is our roundest brush, all right? She's gonna be helpful for our uh, cacti when we get there. And then we got Bob Jr. You can guess why we call Bob Jr. Bob Jr. That's uh, because he's the smaller version of Bob. Fantastic, drop him in the pool as well. And then we got Rhonda Jr. Rhonda is our smallest, roundest brush. Hello everyone on Instagram Live. Thank you for joining us. And then I got all my friends over here on Zoom. All right, so let's let's uh, first, right? So if you don't have a water cup, grab one, you need one. And if you don't have paper towels or some rags nearby, grab uh, some of those as well. And it's good to fold up a few paper towels and just put them right under the cup. All right, and we want to get into the habit of any time we take a brush out, just dab it off on the paper towel or the rag. All right, if you're going to be doing this a lot, I suggest you just dedicate maybe a couple old t-shirts. I just use the same old rags. I actually stole these from Billings. These were uh, in the uh, these were in the ceramic studio. <clears throat> Don't tell Annie and Sean. All right, fantastic. So let's, uh, I assume at this point, give me a thumbs up if you all have your supplies and you're ready to grow, go and grow as painters, I suppose. All right, so we're gonna start with Bob. So let's pull Bob out of the water. And as always, we're just gonna give him a little wipe on the paper towel so he's not dripping wet. If you go straight to the canvas and you have a bunch of water on your brush, it's gonna drip down, which is not what we're going for. All right, so the first color we're gonna be mixing up is this nice dark purple up at the top. So to get that, we're just gonna mix equal parts of red and blue. So to do that, all right, I'm gonna start, and I'm just gonna take a nice little scoop of red here. All right, when I say a scoop, I just take my spoon or my uh, brush and use it like a spoon. I'm just gonna drop that in there. And then I'm gonna take another scoop of blue here. All right, and I just go from the side. I don't worry about my brush being covered in red. That's fine. Just gonna take a nice scoop. And we're just going to drop that in there as well. And let's swirl those up. All right, we don't want to see any bits of solid red or solid blue. We want it all to be a nice purple. All right, so really swirl it around. And if you're working on a flat paper plate, it does help to think about just kind of mushing it into, the, into itself as opposed to spreading it across the plate because sometimes you end up with just a painted plate and all your paint dries out. All right, and then we're just going to start by kind of doing crisscrosses, and that's going to be the whole sky. So on the one that I did earlier, I had all my stuff kind of going straight, and that's a little boring to me. So I'm going to kind of have a little bit of flow to the arc, or a little bit of arc to our sky here. So first, we're just going to start by making little X's as we work our way across the canvas. All right, and I'm really only going to go down maybe about four inches on the left side here, and I'm going to work my way across to this upper corner just by making little X's across the canvas. All right, now it's okay if the paint starts to break towards the bottom 
of your sky here. But anything up in the thick part of the purple, you really want to make sure is a, a nice solid coat. You don't want it globbed on there, but you don't want to be able to see the canvas through there. And I'm just going to kind of work my way across up to this corner with just little X's. Now, if you are working on a three-dimensional canvas like my own, you want to make sure you actually get the sides. All right, so actually go, go around the sides of the canvas here and the top as well. And if you do it earlier than later, you're way less likely to forget. Garden. I always end up with paintings that my sister finds and she's like, ah, oh, you forgot that spot. I, you know. We all forget them, but we want to make sure that we try our best to cover every little spot. Now, if you notice that your paint is starting to grab a little bit on the canvas, just take a little dab of water, right? If I just dunk my brush into the water cup and then swirl that around into my paint, it'll just kind of loosen it up a little bit, flow a little easier there. And, and really the whole way we're just making X's all the way across here. And while we're working here, I'm just gonna mute you guys, but if you do have any questions, feel free to unmute yourself, shout them out, all right? But as we're working here, I'm just gonna keep kind of rambling and working our way across. <clears throat> Again, if you have to, move the canvas so you can get all the parts. And if you run out of the color like I'm about to, it was nice and easy. It's just a nice scoop of red and a scoop of blue, equal parts. Just make sure you swirl them up really good before you go back onto your canvas. So as we start to make our way to this corner over here, all right, you just want to take a, take a look back, make sure you actually covered all parts of your canvas. All right, as it kind of starts to dry, it can shrink a little bit so you can lose some of that coverage. Just make sure that you have all the canvas covered. All right, I'm actually gonna walk around, make sure I get this little side here. Awesome. And I'm going to keep this little arcing cloud cover. I like this. Awesome. And towards the bottom, you can really give it a lot of cr crisscrosses to kind of thin it out so that it'll blend easy with our next layer here. All right, so I am going to use the same mixing container for our next color, all right? So I still have a little bit of that dark purple in there and it's okay if it kind of grabs and mixes in with our next color. But for our next one, we're gonna take a nice big scoop of red. All right, and I'm just gonna kind of plop it in there. All right, and then I'm gonna take a tiny little dunk of blue now, right? And when I say dunk, I'm just gonna take the tip of my brush and just kind of dunk it in there. So I just get a little bit of blue on there. So this color is really going to be mostly red with a little bit of blue swirled in there and then whatever you had left over around. All right, so this is going to be a little bit more red of a purple, still purple. All right, and this one we want to start right on our edge, all right, where we ended our other color, but now we're going to want to bring some of these crisscrosses up, all right, and we're just going to kind of do some of these X's going up into the cloud, and it's just going to blend those colors together. Just a little bit. All right, then we'll bring some of those down once you have those blended. And this layer is only going to be about two inches thick here. I don't want to go too crazy. So here. Yes. That, that last combination. You just added red to the purple? So, I, so in the same, because since I'm using these little containers, right, yeah. so, so just put a big scoop of red next to wherever you were working, and then a okay. dunk, and then a dunk of blue. Okay. And then a dunk of blue, and it'll just be a, a slightly more red version of your purple. 
Got it. Thank you. Yes, of course. Thank you for asking questions. Again, if you have questions at all, don't hesitate to unmute yourselves as we're going and shout them out. Make sure you get them. And then again, don't forget to get your edges as we go. All right. Edges and then double. I'm going to double check the top here. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Perfect. Awesome. And really, I'm only going to go a couple inches there. So that's, that's about as far down as I want to go. Again, I want this one to be a little bit lighter than the one that I did earlier. So I'm going to get a new mixing container. I'm not going to wash my brush or anything. I'm going to keep the brush with the, with the colors I've had on it. That is fine. All right, so now what we're gonna do is take a nice big scoop of red. All right, but this time we are going to add a dunk of yellow. All right, so again, when I say a dunk of yellow, I just take the tip of the brush, dunk it in that yellow, and I'm gonna swirl it around. Are you in a new container now? What's up? Is it a new container? If you are working in containers like me, yes, I switched containers. Okay, so big scoop of red and a dab of yellow. Big scoop of red, dab, a dunk of yellow. Dunk of yellow. A dunk is a little more than a dab. Okay. In, my, in my lingo here. All right, because we are going to add a dab of blue. Just like the corner. So I'm just going to take the corner of my brush there and just add a tiny little bit of blue into there. Barely any. And then this is going to be a nice reddish pink. All right, and you're gonna do the same thing. Just work right across the line where you ended. All right, and lay down a nice, you know, a bit of paint there. And then you're just gonna kind of, with those crisscrosses, just work your way up a little bit. And we are just gonna blend those layers. Again, just with those nice light crisscrosses working back and forth, we're just blending those layers together. And you can go in both directions. And it's totally fine if you start to pick up some of that dark from above or bring some of the light up, right? That's what we want. We want to bring some of these colors together and start to see them play with each other. And as always, don't forget your edges. So again, as we start to run out of this paint color, I'm not going to mix up anymore. All right, we're really just working on blending these layers today. So it doesn't really matter too much about how thick they are. I'm just going to add a little bit of water in there, just get the last little bit of paint and just kind of blend it down a little bit more. Perfect. All right, so again, this container that I'm working in is pretty much empty. If you're basically out of that paint that you were working with, um, then you can just pretty much drop the next color in the same spot. So for our next color, we're gonna go equal parts red and yellow. So for this, I'm gonna just do a half scoop of red and a half scoop of yellow. And this should start to get us more towards a nice orange or a salmon almost. If you pick up some of that blue left over, it might turn a little more salmon. But again, we're just going to start on that edge so you don't forget it. And then we're just going to work our way down. This one will have maybe about two or three inches thick. And again, we're just blending these layers. You don't want to see any of that canvas showing underneath, unless it's right at the bottom of your sky here. If it's right at the bottom, it's fine. So that's going to be where your paint is the thinnest. But you do want to make sure that anything up top is getting a nice full coat. Okay, 
and don't forget your far edge either. I'm going to sound like a broken record tonight, especially if you're working on a flat piece of paper. But for those of us on these three-dimensional canvases, it really looks a thousand times better if you have that, those edges, the sides, the bottom, all that painted fully. Nice, it's really starting to lighten up for us here. So now just, you know, with the, with the last little bit of paint on the brush there, just bring those strokes down a little bit so it thins it out towards the bottom. Double check, look from the side a little bit, make sure that you have all the canvas covered above that line here. <clears throat> All right, so give me a thumbs up if you're ready for that next color. All right, I'll give you guys 30 more seconds. If you're not quite there yet, that's fine. I'm gonna touch up this far side anyway. Problem if I'm much further down than you? Like, no, no. If you're much further like down, you're just gonna have a slightly. No, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Because then you can just bring some of the lighter colors up. Down here, we're gonna have like a desert. All right, but we're gonna paint everything down just to keep it simple so we have something to work with later. All right, but so if you went a little too far, that's fine. We're gonna cover that anyway. Okay, cool. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. So if you did finish that nice color of orangish red going through the middle here, we are going to rinse our brush. So this is the first time that we've really wanted to make sure our brush is somewhat clean. All right. And, and if you're working in a container like me, I'm going to switch containers now because we want this next color to be a nice yellow. All right. Well, it's going to be more of a really light orange because there will be a tiny bit of red in it. But let's do a huge scoop of yellow on a clean spot of your mixing plate. All right, so I got a nice big scoop of yellow in there. Bloop. All right, and then just a tiny, and again, a little bit will go a long way. So I'm just gonna add a corner, a little dunk. All right, so that's how much red I'm gonna mix in there. All right, so now we have a really light, light orange that's starting to go towards the yellow, almost a peach. Sorry, Sawyer, did we change brushes or are we have the no, same brush? No, same brush, we just cleaned them off. Yep. Same brush, all right, and so now we're just gonna do the same thing. All right, I'm gonna start right on that edge, go straight across, and then I'm gonna come back and do that blending. You know, I want to do all the blending while the paint is still a little wet. You don't want it to dry too much before you start to kind of do those crisscrosses and really blend those colors. And that, those little X motions really help to blend your colors. So just keep doing those little crisscrosses. Every once in a while, reload your brush. And then let's bring some of that yellow down. As always, don't forget your sides, both edges. All right, just double check, make sure you're covering all parts of those canvases.
make sure you get that far side too. I usually forget it. <clears throat> Perfect. All right, and once you get down a couple inches with this layer, we're just gonna wash our brush off again. All right, take a deep breath, hydrate. All right, and we're gonna add our next color in just a second. Let me give you guys a moment to get that layer down there. <clears throat> Right. And if you're feeling like you have some of that orange left and you want to kind of bring some up a little bit further, feel free to do that as well. Right. You can bring it up a little further than you might think. That's fine. A couple of swirls up there look nice. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for that next color. Fantastic. So again, I'm just gonna find a new spot on my mixing plate if that's where I'm working. I'm gonna give my brush a little rinse and then make sure you dab them off in the paper towel. Make sure you don't pick up any paint as you're wiping them off on the paper towel. Cause that's what I just did. You gotta rewash them. All right, so now we're gonna do a nice big old scoop of yellow. All right, and try and find a clean spot of your yellow if you can. <clears throat> All right, and then we're gonna add about a half a scoop of white. All right, and we wanna mix these up pretty good. So it's basically just a very light yellow. All right, and this color we are just gonna bring all the way down. All right. And I know it's going to look a little silly at first coming down all the way, but it's just going to be our kind of undertone for when we put our sand down here. And having a little bit of paint to work with down here when we lay down our other colors is helpful. And if you feel that paint start to grip, again, just add a little bit of, tiny bit of water into your, uh, into your paint, mix it around a little bit. And it should just help it glide a little bit across that page, the canvas or whatever you're working on. I really like this yellow, so I'm just gonna bring it up into that orange and just overlap it a lot. It adds for a nice, uh, a nice background to lay some mountains down over, which is what we're going to do in a moment. I ran out of the paint, so I'm just going to mix up a little bit more. Again, it was just a scoop of white, half scoop, of, or I'm sorry, half, a scoop of yellow with a half scoop of white. Taking this all the way to the bottom? Yeah, I'm just taking it straight down.
Don't worry about doing the bottom of the canvas right now. We can get that with a darker color later. But just go right down to the very edge. And then just make sure you got all your sides. Make sure you covered all the little spots up here. Awesome. All right. Once you have everything covered, once you have all the sides, oh, I got to get that far side. I totally neglected my far side. Rookie. But once you have all of the yellow done, we are going to give our canvas a minute or two to dry here. All right. So I do ask that once you are 51% satisfied, just put your brush in the water. You don't need to wash it, but just throw it in the water so it doesn't dry out on you. All right, and we're just gonna let it sit. So this has a couple of minutes to dry before we uh, go back at it. All right, and the next step, we're gonna lay down some nice mountains back here, kind of work our way forward with some sand before we add our lovely cacti. All right. Um, I figure this is a good time as you're finishing those up. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram. Check it out. All right. Sawyer underscore Thompson underscore art. And uh, <clears throat> if you are, you know, if you have any birthday parties or anything like that coming up and you're looking to schedule a private party, reach out to me directly. Seeing the timer. Thank you, Mama. So I think I actually have a group up here at Jay. We're going to uh, do like a little private thing, I think. Nice. Nice. So, a couple of them are artists, too, so it'll be kind of cool. <laughs> it's always they intimidating. They all like draw, though. They're sketchers. <laughs> sketchers? Do they all wear sketchers? By uh, K-Swiss. <laughs> Rock the wear. <laughs> So again, once you finish that, all right, it is important that we do give the skies a second to dry before we lay down our, our mountain range. So give it a sec. All right, and then in a moment, we are going to uh, lay down some mountains. We're gonna put down some nice mountains. How's everybody feeling about their background so far? Oh, I got two thumbs up from Lou. That's a good sign. All right, I'm gonna unmute you guys because it's awkward. I'm sitting here in silence. Hey. Mine is very dark. Yours is dark? Mine. Yeah, see? Mine's back in the top and boring that yours have. Well, so yeah, being dark at the top is fine. You just want to make sure you've lightened it up enough to put your mountains down so you have some contrast. Yeah, yeah, it looks like you did. Yeah. Yeah, I, li I like that, Mai. I like that it looks a little stormy up there. Man, mine looks a lot like yours. It's drying right now. I have it on a fan. Yeah, it's <laughs> mine looks a lot like Dan. And it depends on the red and the yellow that you have. Yeah. yeah, very much. I mean, that's why like I give specific colors that I'm working with. It's not super, super important. Like if you have a blue, a blue will work. But, you know, if you want to know what colors I'm working with, um, I, that's why I give the specific names. But also if you want to make sure, I do have the color tubes available. Uh, so if you ever need the actual hey, paint. What's the biggest size you, you're selling right now? So my biggest size is a four ounce and then the smallest is a two. So a two ounce will last you at least two paintings, probably more. A four ounce will last you more than four paintings, probably. Is this a four ounce? Uh, that is, a, that's, that's probably about four ounces, yeah. Yeah, it says four ounce. Yep, so that's the size of the tube you would get. Uh, and so I sell those for four bucks. Okay. 
A dollar. You know, four bucks? Four bucks for the big tubes, two fifty. Alright, I'll put it in an order tonight, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think I just spent eight bucks on this baby. I got yeah, I think it's like these eight bucks. Sometimes those things are like eleven bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get, I get I get them in bulk and then I tube them myself, so it's you know it's a little work. But stuff is like it's super thin. It like you know it works good, but like it's really thin. Yeah, some of the paints that I have are like, it, it is funny. Like my red is really really liquidy. Uh, some okay. of the paints are more consistent. It just kind of depends on the color as well. Okay. Uh, the purple that we used to have at the studio was 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 not even worth using. I would just throw it away usually because it was like liquid on the canvas yeah um all right but i think i think we have all given our our uh backgrounds enough time to dry it's not really thick so even if it's a little wet that's fine um but we are going to go back to bob all right so let's clean bob <clears throat> clean bob off in the pool give him a good wash all right then take a paper towel and really give him a good squeeze so he doesn't have water and paint all gunked up in there. All right. Are you hanging out or water at any point? Um, I mean, if you have been washing on my cues, you should be okay. Uh, but if you're washing after like each color that we did in the sky, then you might need to change it out. How often are you washing your brushes? I do it when you tell me to. Can you show us how to do paint at some point? Like, not today, but in how to, general. How to do what? How to tube paint. I've never heard of that. <laughs> oh, sure. Maybe my next tubing session, I'll go live. <laughs> it's, it's very exciting I'm stuff. I'm so curious. Pour, pour it in the back and then use the, the wrench and clamp it up. That's it? That's it. It's pretty simple. <laughs> Maybe I should have made it more dramatic. All right. <laughs> So let's uh, let's go. So we're gonna, for our, for the base color of our mountain range. We're just gonna go base black. So we'll just keep it simple. All right. So I'm just gonna use the plain black. All right. And I'm using Bob here. So when I load up Bob, I want him to have a lot of paint, but not gunked up. So what I like to do is take him on the edge of my palette there, just so it's nice and sharp. All right. You want a nice sharp edge there. <clears throat> And really, all we're going to worry about is the top edge of our brush. Okay, what happens beneath it really isn't quite that important. All right, but now you're going to have to make some big decisions, folks. This is where you get to decide where your mountain range is. So, Amory, you can think about your favorite mountain range that you have in West Virginia, and you can do that one, all right? But, or you can just copy mine, all right? So, again, I just kind of like, I'm really only focusing on the top edge of my brush, and I'm actually going to start around my canvas, because I don't want to forget that spot. And I'm going to start about a third of the way up from the bottom, or two thirds from the top if you're counting. All right, so now I'm just going to get the side there, so I don't forget, give it a little ripple. All right, so now again, just thinking about the top of my brush here, I am going to kind of bounce my way along, giving a couple of peaks and ridges here. All right, and I'm gonna reload my brush to start to run out of paint and just keep bouncing my way along here. And I'm gonna give myself two, two mountains hanging out here. So then we'll kind of bounce our way back up. Just wanna be a little more distinguished. Sound effects do help. All right, and then we'll just kind of work our way around the edge there and then just make sure you get that side. All right, so now you should have a nice, sharp top edge, all right? And then all you're going to do is with just a little bit of paint on that brush, you're just going to kind of sweep down, and we're going to go all of our brush strokes in the same direction. Every once in a while, load that brush back up, but don't go above that nice line that you just made. You just want to start right below it. And just... Sorry, can you give us a second to finish the... Oh, yeah. Yep. That line? Yes, yes. Close to Don't overthink it. That's fine. I will have a sip of my beverage. All 
All right, so again, work your way across, give yourself those ridges, bounce around, all right? Keep in mind, you can't really make a mistake here. Somewhere in the world, there is a mountain range that looks just like it from some angle, I promise. <laughs> Unless they're two big squares, and then you're out of luck. <laughs> All right, so again, I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds to finish up your ridges going across. Again, you really don't want to overthink it. You really just kind of want to get into the rhythm of it. Bounce your way around. All right, and then the next thing you're going to do is load up the brush the same way. So you got that nice chiseled tip. All right, and then without, you're not going to go above that line that you just made. Just start right below it, and we're just going to kind of flick our wrist down. And you should kind of get that paint to fade just a little bit. We don't want a very thick coat during this part. We want a nice, thin, even coat. So again, I'm just gently flicking the wrist down. Just so I get a nice, thin coat there. And we're going to blend all that later. So if you get a couple lines that go below, don't sort of stress about it. But we want some nice shadow colors to build on here. So again, every couple strokes, just reload your brush as you work your way across. And just try and think about where you're flicking your wrist here. You don't want some to go super long and some to go really short. Keep them all kind of the same, same length and consistency here. Usually by the time you get to the right side of your painting, everything looks really nice. So again, we're just working our way across, slowly reloading our brush. Every once in a while, take a look from the side, make sure you don't have any big globs on there. Don't forget that far edge. <clears throat> awesome. All right, so I'll give you guys another minute or two to just finish up getting those all the way across here. If you finished like myself, just go ahead and throw Bob in the water so he doesn't dry out on us. If you need to refill your beverage, do that quickly. All right, but we just have a nice shadow color to lay down some highlights on. All right, another. Right, Yo. I'm not trying that. Look out for those mountains, boys. Look at those mountains. I can't do it. Ah! 
I have so much pain in my canvas because it's another one of those canvases <laughs> that I had to like sort of something started. I was gonna say like, you haven't even added any highlights, and it looks it looks like. <laughs> I did. It's just there's so much paint on there. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I'm not covering up Kyle Ren this time though. It's just a few trees. <laughs> a couple of happy trees. <clears throat> So again, with this with this uh, coat of black, you just want to make sure once you go make your way across, just take the brush again and just go across it one more time and just make sure that you don't have any big clumps of black on there. You do want this to be a nice thin coat because uh, when we go ahead and lay down the next the next couple colors, if there's chunks of black on there, they're gonna mix. So. Once you make your way across and you're 51% satisfied, do give it a couple seconds to dry. So take the next 10 seconds and finish up and then we'll let it sit for 45 seconds to dry. All right, I'm gonna refill my beverage. When I get back, we're starting. up if you finished painting more than a minute ago <laughs> all right perfect so the next brush we are breaking out is Bobby J Bobby jr. all right so get Bob jr. out if you're not familiar with Bob jr. he is like Bob only jr. so he looks like that he's our smallest squarest brush Hey, what about if you didn't finish in the last minute? Uh, if you didn't finish in the last minute, it means your canvas is going to be still slightly wet. So fan your neighbor with. Let me get a um, newspaper and start fanning. Or, or a blow dryer, <laughs> newspaper blow dryer, or just take the canvas and fan your neighbor. Well, I am fanning, but I don't want to miss the next step. Well, you just listen very carefully, and if you miss anything, you can just open the door and come into the next room. <laughs> So which, this one? What's up? Or th which one should I use? Uh, which uh, the one you have in your left hand, I think, is a filbert brush. So that one is going to be less square. But you might get some. I would say, like, whatever you think you're going to be able to miss, make the most rockiest like textures with. But I'm going to be okay. the one that I'm going to be using will be most like the one in your right hand. Okay. Thank you very much. 
nine minutes until you gotta reset Instagram. I saw that. Should I just do it now? Like, I don't understand. Yo, yeah, do that shit now. now. Should I just do, do it now? now? Good idea, and then I'll reset. Take your time. All right, here we go. Two, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Alice, it's not that big of a deal. All right, I'm gonna end my live and we're gonna restart it.